This is the Doomed Show, Halloween edition 2020, a.k.a. the longest year in the Guinness Book of World Year Records. I am joined by myself, Boogly Boo, Spooky Guy. No, it's Richard. And I'm Peter DeLuise. <laughs> Son of Dom... Domald DeLuise. Donald and brother of Michael. Yay! Brad, welcome to Halloween. Welcome yourself to Halloween, Richard. Mm. Thank, thank you. you. Folks, we made it. It's the season of giving candy uh, socially distanced from, from trick-or-treaters. I'm sure parents will be hosing down everybody's candy with a nice, delicate layer of... Uh, of hand sanitizer, and that's the candy itself outside of the wrapping, not just the wrapping. I mean, I just, I'm trying to get the poop off this peanut butter. Ooh. No, it, seriously, it's on every piece. It says chocolate, but I just, I just want the peanut butter. I don't know why they cover it in this brown poop. Right. That Hershey's made. <laughs> that was the stupidest thing I've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, folks, we are talking about The Midnight Hour from 1985, a uh, made-for-TV movie, though I feel like this had aspirations for not just on TV, but I'm not sure. It's so full of uh, TV people. Right. Mm. Pardon me, I'm drinking my blood punch. Ooh. It's the clearer variety. Uh, this is directed by Jack Bender, he of lots of TV. Wow. Oh, boy. Uh, mm -hmm. Producer and director. Um, he also directed something I have still never seen to this day. Child's Play 3. I've seen Child's Play 3. I don't know how I've missed it. 3 is where the kid goes to the the, the military. That is the one. Yeah, I've seen it. It wasn't bad. I caught a, uh, like part of it on cable. It looked interesting, but I just never rented it. I am not a huge fan of the Child's Play movies. Yep. Yet, I bought the set on Blu-ray, because that's the nature of my illness. <laughs> you know? You have a very relatable illness. I think so. But I do like the the last two they've done. I really like. I haven't seen I haven't seen the one with Jennifer Tilly as the as his girlfriend or whatever. I'll give him a shot. I, I think I also I think I'm also not a Chucky guy. It used to be Child's Play Two was my jam. I was obsessed with Christina Lee from 90210, so I watched that a lot. And I tried to watch Child's Play 2 recently, and I did not get through it. I was just not not in the mood. I remember. I didn't quite understand it because I knew that you were a fan, and you're like, nope, can't do it. And I thought, hmm. I think I just don't care for Chucky anymore. I'm sorry, folks. Definitely not something. It's not like I'm not crazy. Like, he's great. I just am not into him. I don't know. Yeah, the last two... That they or has it two? The one where they're in the house mm. was, was really good, I thought. Nice. The one after that was good, too. Uh, this director has a connection to 90210. It looks like he directed three episodes in the 90s. I'm trying not to cough into the microphone because my, my new medication um, is awesome. And I'm already switched to a new one that doesn't make me cough. So I'm still got residual coughing. Mm, man, that, that sucks. My nurse practitioner was like, yeah, you probably don't want to take this if it makes you cough because, you know, it's a pandemic and you might freak people out. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm like, oh, that's the best part of it. The worst part of it is that I can't sleep. Ugh. Folks, don't get old. <laughs> it does suck. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I think, you know, I, there was a podcast. I don't even remember what it was. It could have been Cinema PsyOps where they were talking about their ear hair and the gray ear hair. And I was like, guys, don't do it. <laughs> don't come out. And uh, Cinema PsyOps... Y'all, if that wasn't you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Court's like, you... They were reviewing walkers, like the best walkers. <laughs> like Texas Ranger? No, 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 like the, the the kind when their legs don't work so good. Oh, <laughs> like the, uh, <laughs> the, the hurricane? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because that's awesome. Oh my god, no. Um, this guy, uh, Jack Bender, <laughs> he also directed something in 1985 that sounds incredible called Deadly Messages. Ooh. It is another another TV movie uh, starring, I don't recognize, Kathleen Beller? She looks vaguely familiar, but she plays a lady who uh, gets a Ouija board and of course, it's haunted by uh, a person who got murdered. So she tries to solve the murder. Uh, but the I'd watch that heartbeat. Yeah, it looks so good. I'm gonna try to find a good copy of that. I love made for TV stuff. Man, Catherine Beller. Why is that? I don't have time for this. Close the window. No. She's great. Come on. She's son. not even. She's not even involved in what we're watching. Let's move on. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> this was written by William Blake. Or Bleach. I'm not sure how you say his mm -hmm. name. Guess what he wrote, Brad? What? He wrote The Hearse. Are you serious? That's my, I'm serious. That was his debut uh, writing credit was for The Hearse. I would just like to take this moment <laughs> to say once again to people that Richard once wrote that he'd rather throw himself down a flight of stairs than watch The Hearse again. And then one day Scott said, hey, do you want to review The Hearse? And I'll, like, happily review the hearse for EuroCultAV.com. And because I knew, I knew, Brad. I knew, you knew. deep down that I was going to love it. And sure enough, boom, I love the hearse now. I can't believe I hated it so much. It's like, that's one thing for real, to be serious for a moment. The older you get, the more you just, you don't, your rash judgments or whatnot. Yeah. You know. You give out less meh and oof reviews when you get older. XD. <laughs> uh, he also wrote uh, The Stepford Children. That's a TV movie, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, well, wait a minute. Is it? Uh, I don't know. Yes, totally. But what, the, what like threw it. me off is the artwork on IMDb is glorious. Dude, it's like they got one of those Italian poster dudes to do the cover. Mm-hmm. It is gorgeous. I have to. I have to watch this stuff for children now. I had no interest in it. Also, I kind of didn't know it existed. <laughs> right. Damn. Look what happened to Rosemary's baby. Hey, look what happened when I clickety click click. So clickety clack click. Uh, we could spend all of our time on this episode just going through this cast. First of all, mm -hmm. right. This cast is bonkers, and we will absolutely make. Uh, some some nice references going on here, but what the heck is with this cast? This is great, so we'll talk about it. Um, All right. I found on YouTube the original broadcast of this on the ABC Movie of the Week. So I've got this amazing intro that explains the whole movie, just like a trailer. Right. And I've got all of the original freaking commercials that came with it on there too so this should be pretty fun so we're gonna, awesome we're gonna drop some halloweeny style uh commercials in here just to keep things going keep the spirit alive Eternity is about to play a nasty little trick Who's there? on the carefree kids of Pitchboard Co. Figure out what you're going to wear to the party yet tonight. Demons, arise. Yeah. Come heed my 
my bidding on this night of night. Halloween, my favorite time of year. Ah! It won't I'm not afraid of death. I'm going for it. Ah! The party could go on forever in the midnight hour. Next. The only thing that I don't understand is that it it first aired on November 1st. Exactly. So my question... Why would you do that? November 1st, 1985. What day of the week was that? Because this could explain it. It was a Friday. Friday. So yep. That's why. Because they wanted a, mo- the most exposure they could. So they were hoping that people would uh, love it. <laughs> Even though it was a day late and a dollar short. Right. <laughs> exactly. But, or uh, they could be like uh, like Paige and Jeff Barton had me do last year. Halloween's not over just because the calendar says so. Oh, hey, they are wise people. Very wise. They are. No, this is um, this is something that contains so much Halloween. This Lots this Halloween. is like packed because we watch a lot of things. Leah and I watch a lot of things that are very tenuously Halloween. Uh, sure. Every year, for instance. Uh, we watch Slumber Party Massacre every year. Has mm-hmm. literally nothing to do with Halloween except ripping off John Carpenter's Halloween in, in parts. Right. Every year. We have to have it. it. It's one of our like final things we watch on, on Halloween sure. night. And that makes it Halloween. Exactly. So, there's no rules. Nah, just right. <clears throat> hey, just like the midnight hour. That's right. So, um, here's the short plot from uh, IMDb real quick here. Phil, Melissa, Mitch, Mary, and Vinny are high school friends who unwittingly raise the dead on Halloween night. Once the dead have returned, comma, Pitchford Cove will never be the same again, dot, 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 mm-hmm. dot, no, just four dots, or will it? Or will it? It will not it. <laughs> this opens <laughs> with uh, a paper boy and uh, our old buddy, Wolfman Jack. Talking, talking. Oh boy! So this kid, he's he's putting a newspaper, a newspaper. He's putting a playing card on his spokes to make that "quote unquote" motorcycle sound that my dad was so proud of when he set me up right. with that. It doesn't sound like a motorcycle. No, not really. No, it sounds like you got something stuck in your spokes. Yes, like a playing card. <laughs> Just like it. <laughs> it's eerily Just similar. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> so he he cuts his finger uh and he bleeds all over the newspapers so he's running around town tossing out newspapers with just blood on all of them like a significant amount of blood this kid's getting woozy on the bike he really is he needs some crackers <laughs> uh wolfman jack i i you know he's uh, somehow i feel cheated he didn't have a cameo <clears throat> yeah it is like, like in person funny. uh but he he's gonna play lots of that uh that thing that all 80s kids craved so badly, which was 50s and 60s music. <laughs> yes. Man, this has taken me back, dude, to Girls' Night Out, mm-hmm. where they kept playing the Love and Spoonful the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because the 80s did have a big 50s and 60s nostalgia. Yeah. Back to the Future, you know, stuff like that. Yep. To where the 70s look back to the 50s as well. It was weird. And it's like a 20, 30 year deal. Yep. It was like my dad, I'd, I'd come home from school and he'd be embarrassed that he was watching Happy Days and he'd turn it off and look like sad. I was like, dude, just watch your Happy Days. I don't care. Dude, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> In this neighborhood, which I call Americaville, USA. Lovely. It is actually Pitchford Cove, a... a uh, a Massachusetts town, although not very convincingly Massachusetts, since it's obviously California. Obviously. Oh, boy. The mountains in the background. What do you know? Just gave it away. Uh, we meet Hot Dweeb, which is, I think we need to add this to, like, uh, our, our pantheon of character types. Because uh, our, our buddy here, um, what is his name? Uh, Lee Montgomery, who we talked about at length in our frickin' uh, our mutant episode. Is he a mutant? Yeah, he was the little brother of uh, Wings Hauser. No way. Was he really? It's all true. I I looked him up, and it, I didn't remember seeing a mutant. Oh, we did. Yeah, and they did. He was, but he more... Oh, he sure... Yeah. He sure was. Uh, for our purposes in the Schmidt house, he was also in Girls Just Want to Have Fun, 
uh, with uh, a very young uh, Sarah Jessica Apocalypse. I have never seen that movie with Sarah Jessica Horseface. You, <laughs> you and Elizabeth would freak. That movie's so good. It is so really? great. Um, it's unquestionably terrible, but it is important and wonderful. What did you call him just now? The hot geek? Was that right? Hot dweeb. Hot dweeb. Yeah. I'm going to try to remember that. I'm texting Elizabeth right now. The hot dweeb <laughs> was in Mutant. She, she needs to know. Man. She can't wait for, for you to tell her. The thing about Mutant, I, I'm so off topic tonight. Who cares? The thing about Mutant I love is that kid that's dubbed and he, he's dubbed by an adult and they just sped the voice up and, and gave it a higher pitch and it's so creepy. Uh-huh. I'm going to play that here because I, I, I just love that. I don't think enough people talk about that. Please do. Ellie, what are you doing here? I got to school late and nobody was here. School's canceled today, Billy. You can go home. I can't, Miss Pierce. Nobody's at home. My mom and dad are gone. Not enough people talk about our episode, which was I know, brilliant. But that's our job. <laughs> exactly. So this is like your stip your 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 typical suburban little small town. Um very, very small town. Everyone knows everybody else. We meet Phil's family. We got his uh, his mom. He's, this is the Grenvilles. Martin Grenville, his father, who's a psychotic dentist, who will later become a psychotic vampire dentist. Oh, spoiler alert, by the way. <clears throat> oh, boy. This movie, although the DVD is, uh, according to Brad, $188. It sure is. Because this is one of those ones that I want to say... Is worth it. VCD? Who was the company that put that out? Was that an image? Oh, I think it was an image DVD. Anyway, they didn't make enough copies of it, so now it's just really, really, really rare, which is a shame. So hopefully uh, good old Vinegar Syndrome will pick this one up. He is in Burnt Offerings, too, and I can see that now. Dude. He's the kid in Burnt Offerings. That's incredible. I did not Now, that I did not remember. Dude, I haven't watched that in way too long. Yeah. Good call. And I can see it. I can see it now. Damn. Good call. Uh, but his Thank you. his psycho dad dentist is uh, played by Dick Van Patten, one of the most like ubiquitous TV dads of the eighties. Mm-hmm. Um, huge prolific dude. Um, a hundred and sixty credits. What was his big freaking TV? Eight is enough. Oh, that was it. Oh my god. Thank you. I have never seen an episode of Eight is Enough. Um, it's it's just what it is. <laughs> Super, super uh, not challenging. It might have some, like, very special episodes, but I seem to remember it being really, like, light entertainment. Uh, But, yeah, 112 episodes. Jeez. Uh, But, yeah, he is is really fun in this movie. Uh, Mrs. Grenville, I don't recognize her. She, I looked her up, and she was actually... She played Scully's mom on The X-Files. Ooh, good for her. That's cool. That's uh, Sheila Larkin. Lots of TV. Good God. And, of course, uh, Phil is saddled with a, a mean sister. He's got a mean little sister named Vicky, played by Cindy Morgan, who mm, was in no. Tron. No, that's not his sister. Cindy Morgan is the, um, is the substitute teacher. Did I click the wrong thing? Thank you, Brad. That was embarrassing. She's the hot girl in Caddyshack. This is going to be fun to edit. Oh my god, I'm losing it. It's almost like I was really tired. He's got a mean little sister. Can't figure out who the hell she is in the thing. Anyway, she gives him shit. She's trying to play little pranks on him by putting like Halloween hands and stuff. He's late for school. Oh, he's going to be late for school uh, because he has a big... uh, presentation to do with slides is very technologically advanced slideshows were pre powerpoint <laughs> all right yeah good reference so we meet his classmates we got these goofy kids they're 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 goofing in class some some good time charlie behavior up in here mm-hmm. uh, for instance uh, two girls who i'll identify shortly were just playing hangman and uh, funny reference, they were the the answer was ghouls just want to have fun. So a little yeah. psychic reference to girls just want to have fun. <clears throat> Man, I shouldn't have eaten that block of cheese. Ugh. 
followed up with that peanut butter that had poop on it. <laughs> I washed it off. Uh. It smelled like chocolate. So the the girls playing Hangman are very important characters. We got uh, Melissa, played by mm-hmm. Sherry Belafonte, freaking Harry Belafonte's daughter, mm-hmm. who looks just like her dad. It's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, she's going to do some singing and dancing later. I, uh, oh boy, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, but she's paired up with, uh, Mary, who is played by Dee Dee Pfeiffer. True story. Now, Dee Dee Pfeiffer, I recently saw her for the first time. I saw Vamp, which I had a very distinct memory of renting as a kid, and I had never seen Vamp before. I've not, I've not seen it. Dude. I can't recommend it enough. Really? It has two... My only criticism is it loses steam for like maybe five minutes. Maybe. Hmm. It is so crazy. It is so much crazier than I would have thought. It's... I can't believe I thought I'd seen it. It is so wild. I love it. Right. I just bought it from freaking... uh, 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 I ordered it from Grindhouse Video. Ooh. Tampa Zone Grindhouse Video. Look them up, folks. Yeah. So yeah, they're 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 uh, Mary's dumb. She didn't get the joke. She didn't understand. Ghouls just want to have fun. We'll get mm. back to Mary later. Actually, we'll get back to her right now. Our pal Phil has a crush on her, and he's he's screwing up, asking her to the big party, the big Halloween party coming up. Mm. He blows it. The hot substitute teacher walks in. We got uh, mm-hmm. Cindy Morgan. Uh, Brad once told me. That uh, this this teacher named Vicky, uh, she's played by Cindy Morgan, who was the hot girl in Caddyshack. True story. And she was in Tron. Yay. I've never seen Tron either. <clears throat> You're joking. No. You've never seen Tron? I mean, no. I've seen like wow. bits here and there. <clears throat> no, I've never seen, never seen Tron. Interesting. Well, you're in for a, a very long movie. Well, you know, I'm not the biggest Jeff Bridges fan. Well, he's not the problem. It's just it's just an overly long movie, and then they made yeah. uh, Tron Legacy, and they they copied the format by making it overly long as well. <laughs> They're both good. Yeah. They're both full of great, amazing ideas, but man, they drag. Woo! Mm. But that's you know, hate to harsh on everybody's Tron bong they're smoking. Mm. Tron bong, or just Tron. I like Trong, yeah. So all the kids are flirting with the new teacher. They think she's hot because she is, unequivocally. Right. <laughs> she's just gorgeous. But then uh, Phil gives his big, freaking amazing talk about Halloween. And then he gives some local history about a witch named Lucinda and how she was uh, killed by this local uh, witch finder general who was um, his ancestor named Nathaniel Grenville. And uh, mm-hmm. we find out that Sherry Belafonte, uh, Melissa, she is an, an ancestress of the evil witch, Lucinda. Right. And then uh, we get a plan. Because apparently there's a shortage of cool costumes in this town. Mm. The plan, as hatched by our buddy Mitch, who's played by Peter DeLuise, son of, as we talked about before, Donald DeLuise. Mm-hmm. He wants to break into the museum, the local museum, and steal all of the old-timey, what do you call them? Uh, what are they called? Uh, Outfits. No. <laughs> no, the, uh, not Quakers. Puritan. Puritans. They steal all the Puritans' costumes and because they need to dress up for the party. It's going to be awesome. They do this. A very important person is among these good-time Charlies. Uh, we got Vinny, uh, who has the stinkiest costume in the movie. He is played by LeVar Burton. Heck yeah. LeVar Burton, who played Spock on the original Star Trek show in the 60s. But you don't have to take my word for it. <laughs> no, he was Jordash Jean's man on Star Trek Deep Space 10, man. Right. And uh, reading Thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. No, I love LeVar Burton. He's so, dude, he is energized for this movie. <laughs> yeah, he is. I didn't even mean to make that joke just now. <laughs> wow. He's energized. <laughs> Engage. <laughs> oh my God, make it so, brother. <laughs> make it so. Please make it so. Earl Grey, hot. <clears throat> 
So they freaking break into this damn museum and steal not just like the costumes, they steal a trunk and then they take it to the, uh, the freaking, um, uh, what do you call it? The cemetery. I couldn't, wow, it must be Halloween. I can't think of the word cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take it to the Civic Center. They take it to the limit one more time. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> they start to put on these lame-ass freaking costumes, and then they break open a secret compartment in the uh, this this uh, trunk they stole, and they find a scroll and a ring, and they break the seal in the scroll, and it's got a magical spell on it, and of course... Uh, Melissa, the descendant of the witch Lucinda, starts reading from it. She gets very into it. I, I just love her big-eyed, like, whoa, voice that she does. It's so cute. And uh, right after they, they book it, they get out of there to go get ready for the party, the dead begin rising explosively. And I mean, like, literally, they didn't want to, like, have all these people dig their way out. So they show people digging. And then, boom, 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 bombs go <laughs> off and people ra- rise. I wish they'd done one, like, trampoline, where the explosion oh, sent yeah. the person flying. Amazing. <laughs> that would have been in either a Lamberto Bava movie or a Hong Kong movie. So you could have both of those things. Excuse me, Lambava. Thank you. The Mo Lambava. Mo better. Lucinda. We got, we got two... Maybe three ghosts who are zombies who do not look dead. They look very much alive. Everyone else has got zombie makeup on. Uh, but mm-hmm. Lucinda, the witch, is played by Jonelle Allen, and she looks fabulous for having been dead for 100 years. Boy, howdy. I recognize her a little bit. I did not. She was in a movie I've always wanted to see. I'm a little scared. Uh, but she was in a movie called Vampire from 1979. Starring mm-hmm. freaking Richard Lynch. Scary. Yeah. Terrifying. Like, he's like uh, Dracula with horrible burns on his face. I'm not sure what they're going for. <laughs> Love him. Uh, but she makes, oh man, she makes a great witch. But she's not just a witch. She's a vampire witch. The best kind, like uh, from the werewolf versus the vampire women. <laughs> <laughs> In what I think is the the longest running Grease joke. Uh, we have hmm. a teeny bopper cheerleader uh, named Sandy. Sandy! Come out of the ground. And she's played by Jonna Lee. And uh, she's going to be our, our pal uh, Hot Dweeb Phil's lady for this movie. Right. Uh, but she was a, another TV actress. That's a, like a recurring theme with this freaking episode. Uh, stuff like TJ Hooker and... Hooker! Airwolf, uh, Silver Spoons, just like one episode things. Right. Oh my god, she played the most famous character, Sorority Girl, in uh, Monster in the Closet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which uh, is a freaking trauma movie from hell, which I can't remember if I've seen before or not. Probably? Maybe not? Uh, so we, yeah, we get it. we get the cheerleader, we got the witch, slash uh, freaking... Uh, vampire we got a little dude like a little person we got Mm -hmm. a werewolf this movie has more than one werewolf indeed wow and uh just a lot of assorted ghouls and then with this whole like beautiful cemetery scene with all the mist and the big red clouds and explosions and cool lighting we get the most terrifying Mm -hmm. scene in the movie brad This will haunt me for the rest of my life. Really? Yeah, this part here. When they reveal Phil's costume for the party. What the fuck is Phil supposed to be? Well, (laughs) it's it's hard to say because he's wearing like a, like a, a Christmas tinsel wig. And he's painted his face like, I don't know. A David Bowie reject. Yeah. And then he's dressed up like classic Dracula. Yeah, exactly. Classic Dracula, the cape, the frickin', the fancy shirt, the, the all the, the accoutrements you expect from a Dracula costume. But then he's got his face painted blue and white as either a Transformer or like a Delta Airlines logo. Right. It's interruptive. To the movie. The movie comes to a complete stop 
because you cannot figure out what the fuck he's supposed to be. I love this detail. And everyone thinks he looks cool. His little sister thinks he looks cool. People at the party don't comment. No one asks him what he's supposed to be in this entire movie. Yeah. Whew. Man, terrifying. Meanwhile, our buddy Mitch, son of Donald DeLuise. I just keep making that joke um, because I think Donald is really funny. It is. Thank you. He's having a fight with his dad, and this is some brilliant casting here. Folks, Kevin McCarthy Mm -hmm. from the OG Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Mm -hmm. The Howling. And The Howling and the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I always knew him best as a kid from Weird Al Yankovic's UHF movie. Ah. Uh. Yeah. 206 credits from this guy before he passed away in 2010. Yeah, he's in Piranha, isn't he? Oh, is he? Oh. Yeah, I think he's in Piranha. I mean, I'm not surprised. He's in every other damn movie. Jeez. Yeah. No, I love this guy. He's one of those classic yeah. voice actor guys. Like, you hear him and he does have a distinctive look, but it's his voice that just is just ingrained in my mind. One of those great shouting guys. Uh-huh. And he is certainly shouting here. He thinks um, that his son is a loser, and he knows that he stole the costume, and he's tired of protecting him. So if he gets caught and arrested, he's going to like personally throw the book at his own son. Um, I wrote in my notes, geez. Judge Dad mm-hmm. is a real dick bagel. Imagine that. Yeah, crazy. Good old Mitch storms out, still wearing the lame costume. And uh, <laughs> mm. we'll get back to the judge in a minute. That's when uh, Phil meets his dream girl. He, he stopped at a light and he sees this beautiful Bobby Soxer uh, cheerleader wandering around the, the streets, you know, kind of discombobulated. And mm-hmm. he just totally falls for her instantly. Has a whole fantasy sequence of wrapping his arms around her and dancing while he's still wearing that horrendous costume. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> she doesn't even ask him what's wrong with him. She, like, thinks he looks okay or something. And I'm like, what? Mm. Uh, but he informs her it's Halloween. And she's like, oh, that's explaining why things are so weird. You know, she wasn't sure why she climbed out of a grave tonight. Well, I mean, if you did that, you just have to assume it's probably either Halloween or Walpurgis night. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Nash is like, oh, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so Vinny, our buddy LeVar Burton, has he says, quote, that he works better under pressure. So he didn't have a costume planned until the last minute. So he's wrapped some ace bandages around his body to be a mummy. Mm-hmm. And then he decides to age it. Uh, but he, he, he tea stains it. So he takes some some tea, like some just a generic like nestle tea or tetley tea and dips the bandages in the tea and lets them dry out real good so they look all worn and nasty and then he gets a bunch of like just like old rags and strips them down no i'm just kidding he takes an ace bandage and then smears ketchup all over himself because as you know mummies are covered in in slightly brownish blood right but then he smashes yeah you know this you're a big mummy fan boy then he smashes a raw egg on his body. No. No. No, don't do this. No. For the terrible. rest for the rest of the movie, everyone's going to tell him he stinks. Mhm. <laughs> I would have to say he does not think well under pressure. Oh, at the cemetery, a a notorious murderer in the town named uh uh, Vernon something or other he mm-hmm. murdered 18 people and of course uh, Judge Dick Bagel had put him away so when he gets out of the grave he immediately goes and murders the judge but more importantly Brad it's party time it is party time this is a great Halloween party this is like sweet stuff here it's not quite uh, the scope of um, Primal Rage which uh, check out the Primal Rage episode for Jeffrey and I being baffled as to how many, like, how they afforded all the extras in that movie. Yeah. But this is a solid party. This is very solid. Uh, and we're going to have lots of zombie jokes. Oh, God, we didn't even talk about the jokes in this movie, man. This movie's got some jokes. Got some jokes. I'm going to do a little spoiler about how I feel about this movie. It's got tone problems. And not like it gets rapey or anything, but it this doesn't 
really balance the serious and the comical very well. <laughs> <laughs> so we get a lot of real, like real uh, knee slappers uh, in the freaking joke department. Uh, a zombie we've seen uh, crashes the party, and we have lots of like him, like mmm, popcorn, like oh. And later he gets a zombie date girl who he makes out with. Oh man. I, I wish he'd gotten a living girl that was dressed like a zombie to kiss on. That would have been even hotter. Yeah. Uh, but Phil's excited because uh, no one's kicked him out of the party for his hideous costume. And uh, Mary's coming. Mary had to babysit, but she actually used all of the babysitting money that she's earned to pay a babysitter so that she can go to this party. That's Is that like a weird like conflict of interest or something? I don't know how, I don't know how babysitters work. Uh, it's, it's messed up, man. She shows up in her punk outfit and he gets all excited because she's there. She does not know Phil exists. Right. He's talking to her and she's completely ignoring him because she wants to hook up with this Frankenstein dude. Who's this hot dude. (sighs) Meanwhile, when Phil's there, uh, right before that, Phil meets Lucinda, the witch slash vampire. And she is so creepy. (laughs) Hmm. She will continue to be creepy as she raids the party and uh, she sets her eyes on Melissa, her her ancestor, to drink her blood, which I think is incest. It's weird, something or another. It's like I told you a million times. Incest is only wrong if the parties are different genders. Incest mm. between same sex, totally cool. Uh. Lietta has informed me I should stop saying that out loud. Probably. It's a really bad thing. I am totally not serious. <laughs> I just don't want any flipper babies being born. Well, I mean, it's a genuine concern. It was only a couple of flipper babies. There's your there's your kids in the hall brain candy reference. It's a pill for the world that gives worms to ex-girlfriends. <laughs> Cut on my head. Yeah, we, we could do this all day. <laughs> we could. Oh, my God. I love that movie. It was wonderful. What a wonderful film. So... Mm-hmm. Lucinda uh, follows our pal uh, Melissa downstairs to the wine cellar. Oh, uh, by mm-hmm. the way, this was the creepy house, and so uh, her family, who's descended from these witches, is just living in this creepy old house. I love that they have this whole thing about the wine that she's getting from the cellar is only for Vicky and the other teachers who are chaperoning the party. Very important. This movie has non-alcoholic partying and just some making out teenagers. Typical. Very cute. Downstairs, Lucinda vamps in the most amazing Morrissey video ever. <laughs> they, they're literally playing a Morrissey song. It's uh, How Scene Is Now. Is it a Smith song? Yeah, it's a Smith okay. song. And it's... Uh, as far as I can tell, this was my favorite scene of the film. I'll just go ahead and spoil it. It's how scene is now. I can only think of two other films that have the Smiths in it. You've got Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Demons 2. Wow. But, well, I'll let you go ahead and then I'll tell you why I love it. Oh, well, she starts sucking on... I just left a pause there for fun. Oh. She starts sucking on her frickin' ancestor in the neck area, and this is after lots of uh, strange vampiric double entendres about drinking blood and drinking wine, oh. and then all the wine bottles start popping, yeah. <laughs> and all of this slow motion shit's going on with slow motion uh, wine bottles popping, and of course, the wine is red, and so the floor is covered in red blood wine. It's gorgeous. Mm. And it just fits the the Morrissey, excuse me, the Smith so perfectly. And the reason I always confuse it is because, to me, this that song is like, I don't even know mm-hmm. if it's really late in the Smith's career or not before they broke up. It, it feels like a transition into the Morrissey solo stuff. Yeah, it's got a, a Bo Diddley riff. It's what they call it, oh. and it's not representative of the Smiths at all, no. but it is probably their most well-known song in America. Yeah. Uh, it was a B-side of uh, William, It Was Really Nothing. Oh, really? And, yeah, and it was on Hatful of Hollow, but if you ever hear a Smith song on the radio, nine times out of ten, it's going to be How Soon Is Now. Well, that's the thing. In the 90s, when I'd go to clubbing with my friends, because I literally had nothing else to do, and I was like, 
the polar opposite of a club kid. Like, here's how lame I was. I would go to these clubs where my friends would all dance and I would just sit around and then try to get the DJ to play ska songs. Right. That really happened. More fun than that. One of the clubs we went to was called, it was called Banana Max. And then they changed the name to get all the kids to come and they called it the Brio Beach Club. (laughs) Uh, Folks, uh, Palm Beach, uh, specifically Jupiter, Florida in the 90s, we had no scene of any kind of anything except for uh, a couple of really, really dire uh, punk ska bands. (laughs) Wow. Hopefully they're listening. So, long story short, too late. Morrissey, okay. Smith's, hooray. Yeah, it's one of my least favorite Smith songs, but it was it, yeah. it was done really well here and they added they added sounds to it. Like some of the sounds that play over the song are not from the song. Oh, nice. It goes to slow motion and it was amazing. And it didn't like, it did not belong to the film that we've been watching so far. <laughs> no. No, exactly. We've switched gears. Did I even mention that the reason I brought up those clubs is because they always played that song? Did I even talk about that? Or did I just did I just talk about the Brio Beach Club for no reason? <laughs> I think you just talked about the Brio Beach Club for no reason. <laughs> anyway, they play that song a lot. Like, it was always playing. Always. So, it was wow. it was usually 80s night all throughout the 90s at these clubs. Tangent. Tangent. So Phil ditches the party because let's just face it, he's not having a good night. He's just, everything's just going wrong. The greatest moment, though, is when he gets burned by frickin' Mary. He sits on the stairs pouting and the little person zombie sits next to him and they're like, what are you going to do? And he hands him his cool guy shades and then he puts on his glasses because he's a hot dweeb and they just sit there and it's the most iconic moment from this movie is just him mm. chilling on the stairs with this little zombie dude. Ugh. <sighs> God, it's so good. I want that on a t-shirt. It's freaking wonderful. Yeah, it is. So he ditches and he he picks up Sandy. Sandy's running around town trying to find her parents' house and she's harassing people and asking them where the hell is my parents' house and all this stuff. Finally, she gives up, realizes she's transported magically to the greatest decade of all, and uh, she gets in the car with Phil, and they go for a little ride. Wow. And uh, now that Melissa's been bitten by the vampire, she's going to spread the vampire plague all over the party. Now, Vinny has been sad because she won't, like, hang out with him and hook up with him. Every time he tries to kiss her, she pushes him away. But now she's into him because, man, she wants to suck him dry, bro. Mm. Hmm. And, uh, <laughs> just LeVar Burton's satisfied, sexy face when she bites his neck is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did that happen on Star Trek Next Gen? I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Sandy and uh, Phil go driving around town. They go to the multiplex where she is utterly confused by where the drive-in has gone. And they have all these f- awesome fake movies on the billboard i think maybe one of them's real but i think all six of the movies at the multiplex are fake just fake horror and i wish i should have written them down i i I apologize folks you'll just have to watch the movie yeah there was some fun ones i didn't write them down either but her question is like wait a minute six movies playing how do you keep from hearing the movie playing next door and he's like you don't (laughs) you don't man multiplex no thanks glad we got rid of those Uh Gone now. Uh, she's horny and suggests they go to Make Out Point after they have a nice pitiful drag racing thing that's very fun. Saturday, a dope dealer gets a taste of Detectives McCarran and Rado on the Hollywood Beat. And la la, from Italy to the French Riviera, join Dynasty's Jack Coleman, Lisa Welchel, and Harry Morgan for a very special two-hour love boat. You'll love it! Tomorrow. So I took some screenshots of the marquee uh, and it's a Halloween Fright Fest here. Halloween Night Fright Films. And mm-hmm. uh, they're walking in front of the marquee, so I apologize if I have trouble reading this. Uh, but the first one is called Deadly Messages. Ooh. Uh, the second Seems one... Seems like you brought that up earlier. Yeah. The other one's called... Oh, maybe these are all movies that he did. <laughs> hey. Uh, the second one is Night 
Night of the Ghouls, plural. Mm. And the, th- the third one is Undercurrent. The fourth one is Beasts from Beyond. That's my favorite. And then uh, Mr. Metz and Mr. Detz or something. And then I can't read the bottom one. Oh, it just says starts at midnight. So, yeah, it's a midnight festival. It might be Mr. Metz and Mr. Death or something. I have no idea. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Very confusing. So, I want to go to that all night thon mm-hmm. in my thong. That's like when people ask thong, me, thong. did you say doomed movie thong? And I'm like, yes. Obviously, I did. <laughs> Hello, this is the thong show. <laughs> <laughs> When they go to make out point, because Sandy's super horny, because she's back from the grave to get some, we get our werewolf attack. Well, here's one of the silly callbacks. This movie has a lot of callbacks. The mm-hmm. guy, the redneck guy who spits the chewing tobacco, he has these scary dogs that he uses to guard the museum. So because he has these scary dogs, it's ironic that he should get attacked by the werewolf and become one himself. Because mm. he's a dirty dog. Dirty. And uh, they barely escape being killed because he slashes through uh, Phil's awesome soft top car. What do you call those? Convertibles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And <laughs> they get away. They go to the police station. And who do we get but Officer Clarence Boddicker himself, Kurtwood Smith. Mm-hmm. Good old Red from uh, That 70s Show and a billion other things is the town... Uh, Lawman, who's he's had it. He has had it with Halloween. He hates Halloween. It's great. Man, this dude, 154 credits, including the first film I ever memorized by heart, which is Robocop. Mm-hmm. Can you fly, Bobby? Now I'm asking you, Brad, can you fly, Bobby? Yes, I've oh, flown okay. Bobby several times. Yay. Uh, but he plays just, you know, he's a character actor, so he just plays himself. It's great. Um, and they're talking about, he's talking with his fellow officer about all the crazy shit that's, hap- that's happening in their town. Mm-hmm. And it's just this wild freak fest because, of course, this is the Halloween night to end all Halloween nights. And after they give up trying to convince the, the police that there are werewolves about, uh, uh, Sandy calls them fuzz. And they're like, what? <laughs> uh, because she's, you know, uh, 50 years old. Right. 50 years old from the 50s. Phil lets it slip that they read from this uh, ritual. And she's like, ritual? What do you mean ritual? What ritual? And he tells her all about the bullshit they did at the frickin' cemetery, which at this point in the movie feels like a thousand years ago because so much has been going on in this friggin' movie, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so she's hip to it. She knows all about it. And she's going to frickin' uh, get it sorted. She's going to her and Phil go to save the day. But first, we got to get through the musical number, bro. Dude. Uh, of all the things I was expecting to happen in this movie, this is not one of them. I was n- no. <laughs> not expecting the song uh, called Get Dead, which is officially being added to our uh, Halloween mix every year now. But good old uh, Harry Sherry Belafonte, uh, she sings this song as this catchy little thriller ripoff part of the movie. It is elaborate, uh, but the choreography is not real good because they kind of rushed it, so it's sort of good. But they go through this whole song and everyone's doing their thing, man. Because everyone at this party is now vamped out or on their way to becoming vampires. It's wonderful. Yeah. For some reason, uh, Phil knows that his dad has a bunch of silver, and they're going to go melt down a bunch of silver to make silver bullets. Mm. So they're making silver bullets. They're just just dipping the tip, which is how you keep pregnancies from happening. You just dip the tip. Don't follow that advice. (laughs) Oh, sure. Contradict (laughs) me. Okay. I see how it is. No. Uh, So he's making silver bullets, and zombie dad dentist shows up. So we got Dick Van Patten. With the lamest fangs ever. 
I thought it was by far one of the scariest things I have ever seen. Dude. It really freaked me out. I was like, oh my god, is this Salem's Lot? Yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes, of course. It is. Uh, but yeah, he so he gets away, and they, they run out of the house, and then we have the whole sequence, this whole very elaborate slow-mo bit when we see the whole town is now transformed into uh, Monster Town USA here, where before it was Americaville USA. Right. We got Civil War ghosts. Uh, we got World War One zombie ghosts. We got all manner of vampires. The freaking werewolf is like running around on the ledge on the second floor of City Hall in slow motion or something. Everything's just gone crazy. They're just pumping all this smoke, all this like... Uh, this beautiful red smoke, and even uh, the cops are freaking zombie vampires now. Uh, Sandy and Phil are driving through town real slowly in the hopes that nobody will notice them. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, they realize that they need the ring. So there is this ring with the uh, the seal of Mr. Nathaniel Grenville, Witchfinder General. Uh, they need his ring so that they can reseal the frickin' uh, scroll with wax made of the blood, or excuse me, of the bones of the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Elizabeth's like, how do you do that? I'm like, I don't know. It's a, it's an art that we lost in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, it was the deleted scene from uh, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. We could have learned. Could have. It's really elaborate. Just like everything else in this movie, it's really elaborate. And of course... Uh, they got the scroll, they got the wax at the cemetery, because, you know, they got the guy's corpse. But then, they have to go back to the party, because Mitch is wearing the ring. Mm-hmm. And they have a whole crazy siege scene with the vampire party, trying to get them. And they get the ring by slamming Mitch's arm in a door, and, and, and barricading it so he can't get in. Then they use, like, Aunt Jemima maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> To squeeze all over his hands so they can slip the ring off, man. Uh, mm-hmm. And LeVar Burton's like, no, 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 give me that, give me that freaking maple syrup. I want to pour it all over my costume. Yeah. My costume isn't what an, stinky enough. Why didn't I think of this? Oh, can you imagine? Dried ketchup, a rotten egg, and freaking maple syrup stank. Boy. <laughs> Oh, what? I'm sure somebody who, like, uh, cleaned out a dumpster at Waffle House is like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I've done it. That's my perfume. They get back to the cemetery, chased by all these creatures. They barely get the ritual complete as they're trapped in Phil's car, which still has huge holes in the ceiling from the werewolf. I don't know how they're not getting in through the damn roof of the car. Mm-hmm. But Sandy... Right before she finishes the spell, she tells Phil, I love you. Oh. And then she disappears, and f- everything goes back to normal. Anyone who got killed is no longer dead. Anyone who is vampiric, werewolfian, or zombian is now fine. Yep. But uh, Phil sees that uh, he finds Sandy's grave, and he immediately masturbates on it. Oh, you must have been watching the unrated one. <laughs> Just dip the tip, everybody. <laughs> oh, boy. Halloween 2020. Don't worry about the pandemic. Just dip the tip. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he finds what I guess is her jacket or her skirt. I'm not sure what part of clothing it is he finds. I don't know what it is, but he takes it off mm-hmm. and she's written in lipstick. Uh, their initials. And uh, when he gets in the car, the the Baby I'm Yours starts playing. It's so adorable. Yeah. Because she'd called in, she'd called in a freaking uh, request to Wolfman Jack. And of course, we get Wolfman Jack back in it. <clears throat> oh, and they play Midnight Hour uh, like three times mm-hmm. to, you know, go with the theme, the name of the movie also. Right. But for real, folks, that's the plot. I swear. That's it. That's it. Good job. A little bit of trivia. Uh, there's not nearly enough trivia. Uh, we got Macaulay Culkin, or as I read it, every time I see his name now, I think of it as Masculine Culkin. I don't know why I do that. Interesting. <clears throat> he makes his first ever on-screen appearance as an uncredited trick-or-treater. Boy, am I going to look for him next time, because that is hilarious. Yep. 
I didn't. I didn't see him. Nope. Uh, Melissa's house, <clears throat> uh, where the big party party happens, it was also the house in uh, Matilda, uh, the house in Scream Two, and less interesting, uh, Catch Me If You Can, among others. The big famous Hollywood house, and the small town where they film this is super crazy. Like, what was it called? Where they filmed this was Universal Studios. 100 Universal City Plaza, so just on the lot at Universal City. It's like 14 or 1,500 things. No, I'm sorry, uh, 13,000 things. So that's like movies and TV episodes were filmed wow. at this place. That's wild. Uh, Sherry Belafonte was 31 years old when she was playing a high school student. <laughs> yeah, LaVar Burton was like 40. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so cute. Dee Dee Pfeiffer was 65. <laughs> no. That's all. That's like all the trivia I got. Who else Good is Good trivia, though. Thank you. Thank you. Who else is in this cast? So the zombie, uh, the, the or credited as the ghoul, was played by Mark Blankfield, who was a fairly prolific actor. He uh, was in like Dracula Dead and Loving It, uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. He was in the Sledgehammer TV show. I think he's just a regular with those that crew that made all those comedies. Um, he was on Fridays, the um, the Saturday Night Live ripoff show. He's in one of the movies that scared me to death as a kid, like terrified me. Was the Incredible Shrinking Woman? Mm, I haven't seen that. Oh, dude, it's it's pretty good. It's solid. I remember it being like a, an effective movie because I was like six or seven, and it gave me like my first existential crisis. Like it's just a great. It's it's one of those things they call a mind. Flip movies. Mm. Uh, Hank Gear. <clears throat> God, my voice. <clears throat> Folks, I've been podcasting for nine years and I'm getting worse at it. But everyone knew that already. Uh, Hank Garrett, uh, the sergeant who worked with uh, good old uh, officer Clarence Boddicker. Uh, very, very familiar dude. You've seen this guy. 85 credits, man. Death Wish, Amityville Horror, frickin' Three Days of the Condor, Maniac Cop 2. Johnny Dangerously, Exorcist 2, lots of small roles. Uh, Serpico, but yeah, he's he likes to play a cop. Wow. Um, our little person actor is Joe Gieb, or Gibe. Uh, he's in lots mm. of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. He liked to work. He was in uh, Weird Science. <laughs> he was in Going Overboard. Mm. Uh, showed up in like Seventh Heaven and Seinfeld and frickin'... God, you know what I'd watch before I'd watch Seinfeld? What's that? I'd watch Seventh Heaven. Really? Yeah, I can't stand Seinfeld. That's what I'm going to do as soon as we get off the phone. I just like Jerry by himself. I like his solo work. No, I'm kidding. It's Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, I remember I can't you stand liked, him. Uh, B-movie quite a bit, didn't you? Yeah. Dude, I got the tattoo. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's, I got bees flying out of my butt. I'm just kidding. They're flying into my butt. I'm not anti-nature. No. <laughs> no, seriously. The the biggest drawback to, to Seinfeld is Jerry Seinfeld. He sucks. Anyway, folks, I'm going to ask Brad a question, a very important question. Not a question time, but it's an important question. Brad, yes. how did you like the Midnight Hour? I loved it. Um, yes. I had read... I was aware of it. It didn't really sound like my thing, but I was wrong. Uh, Elizabeth and I watched it, and we had both concluded, I don't know, about halfway through it, that it was a little slow. But when everything kicks off, I think it kind of, it not makes up for it, but that it that it fit well. You had the easy going, because we were at, an it's an hour and 34 minutes, and in an hour, no one knows anything is wrong. And I'm like, they're going to have to start wrapping this up because, you know, it's the same. I mean, it's a trope. Something like this happens and it takes a little while for people to realize, hey, that little guy is actually a dead dude. <laughs> so they were an hour in before anybody for the werewolf attacks them. Uh, the scene where Sherry Belafonte is in the, the cellar, the wine cellar, was amazing. Uh, the scene of Dick Van Patten as the vampire dentist was horrifying. Super scary. Really? <coughs> yeah. Like, that yeah. That actually got With, you? Yeah, it, it was very... 
unsettling because Dick Van Patten. It was just a, it was an odd. Nice. No, I'm glad. I, was, I thought you were joking before. No, that's great. No, it, it, no, it was it was creepy. Nice. <laughs> and the film ends with a song called "Baby I'm Yours," which I knew for an Arctic Monkeys cover on the Leap Before the Lights Come On single from a jillion years ago. Wow. So I've always really liked that song. I, I knew it was uh, a cover because it sounds like a, even their version sounds kind of like a 50s or 60s kind of doo-wop sort of thing. Uh, but no, I really enjoyed it. Plus, it's got, like you said at the beginning of the show, it's got a lot of Halloween stuff in it. You've got some trick-or-treating. you got a mom telling her kids, you know, Katie better have rappers. And I can totally see us going back, maybe making that part of our our yearly watching because yeah. I really it like it seemed it seemed pretty meandery, but then when it started kicking off, finally it it worked. You know what I'm saying? I can't really exactly. I'm probably not <laughs> verbalizing that very no, well. I, I get you. Plus, it's got the Smiths, even though it's one of my least favorite Smith songs. You <laughs> just don't you don't hear the Smith very often in in films. No, we loved it. Yes. I was glad you picked it. <clears throat> yeah, this this be- Elizabeth loved it. She loved it as well. Yay! That's all that matters. It really is. We do this for the ladies. Absolutely. Now, I discovered this three years ago because Lietta and I were dying for some new Halloween movies, and mm-hmm. I weirdly had always mixed this up with another film I've never seen before, called Spookies, mm-hmm. which I've heard Spookies is pretty fun. But I don't know why me mixing up Spookies and Midnight Hour meant for many, many years, I would just not watch either one. (laughs) I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, So when I did download it, because of course, like we said, it's out of print. It just hit. That first viewing hit. And I was like, Lietta, this is going to be every year. And she's like, absolutely. Because of course, because of girls just want to have fun. We love ourselves some Lee Montgomery. Mm-hmm. And then the second viewing the following year was like, boom. And I was like hyping it to you. Like, we got to do this as a Halloween episode. This is going to be fun. And I'm so glad mm-hmm. that you loved it. Oh, yeah. Uh, this has an awesome cast. Like like I said, I kind of had to give up on just all the connections. This is just, just has so many people in it. Um, I love the Halloween content. I love the bad jokes. And accidentally... There's a couple of like really funny jokes in this. I was very shocked to find myself genuinely laughing even after the third viewing. All the little stuff pays off even if it's kind of lame. Like I was talking about the callbacks, even if they're cheesy, they still call back. Uh mm-hmm. tone problems. Yeah. This is not mixing comedy and horror very well. Uh mm-hmm. but it's still doing it and it's all good. It's just not flowing. It has a lot of heart. Like, it just feels, like, so homey and fun. Of course, because all of the supernatural stuff gets reversed at the end, like like a typical TV horror movie would do. It it also means there's no consequences, so it just adds to the, yeah, we're going to dabble in horror, but it's not, it's not real. It all goes bye-bye. I like that. Right. I think this was born to be a cult film because of the cast and because of the bad jokes and because of the music. And every all of the the stuff that just got mixed up, and it's like a, it's born to be a cult movie that people are going to look back on and be like, "Did I see this on TV when I was like five? Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. And it's just so tame and so light. Um, I I even forget that it's a freaking made for TV movie half the time. But then you, you know, like all of a sudden you're like, so no blood, no zombies getting chopped up or no, nothing like things just are just so mild and i love it <clears throat> yeah and yeah i put it to you vinegar cinder let's see the blu-ray for this bad boy heck yeah did would... you uh did you mention the music by brad fidel <gasps> i did not i missed a music yeah. credit there he's uh did the music for terminator and a bunch of like-minded oh, things shit. thank you for catching that absolutely let's see I didn't even talk about the cinematographer who maybe worked another time. So, yes, Brad Fidel or Fidel or Fidel. He's in the fetal position. Uh, in the music department for a lot of stuff and the composer for. Wow. wow. He, he certainly likes freaking uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. 
He did the music for Ridley Scott's Gladiator. No, I'm just kidding. He did the music <laughs> for Rowdy Harrington's Gladiator, which is is this something. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, let's see. He did the music for Fright Night Part 2, which I've still not seen again because of the disgusting uh, bug scene. Folks who have seen mm. Fright Night 2 know what I'm talking about. Uh, Serpent and the Rainbow. Oh, man. Dude. Oh, we did the music for Eyes of Fire. Holy shit. Speaking of cult yeah, movies, dude. man. Oh, my God. Eyes of Fire. That's something else, y'all. I can honestly genuinely say that I've never seen anything quite like Eyes of Fire. Very nice. Now, the cinematographer on this is Rexford L. Metz. Uh, he did a lot of stuff. He was a camera equipment dude. Uh, so second unit stuff he did a lot of. As for cinematographer, uh, uh, just TV, 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 TV stuff, all TV stuff. Uh, but yeah, his, uh, his fricking, um, second unit work is incredible. Ghostbusters 2, shout out to Simon, uh, Tron again, mm. uh, six pack, which is hilarious. Cause I actually saw uh six pack with, uh, Kenny Rogers, and Diane Lane, a bunch of kids. I actually saw it in the theater, and I was bored. Uh, he did the underwater uh, photography on Blowout. Man, this guy just yeah, I love I love this little like the dude who almost was, you know, like <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like he, I mean, obviously he had a great career, but just like wow, like just second unit. That's brilliant. I'm not even fifteenth unit. So Brad. I don't know if you know this, but this is the first Halloween season where we've had a black cat in the house. Ooh, yeah, I guess that's right. And uh, she takes after her uncle, uh, Crisco, because what, yeah. is she, what is she like? She's staring at me already. She likes my notes when I'm done with them. Heck yeah. Oh. It's the only time her eyes open wide because she's excited about paper. You are making sure that they're going to the Smithsonian, right? You're not just letting her eat them. Oh, my notes? Yeah. Yep. It's uh, the Smithsonian by way of the Tampa Bay, uh, or excuse me, Hillsborough County recycling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Those man. lucky dogs. So yeah, folks, we, we found a black cat at the frickin', uh, frickin' shelter and we adopted her. Awesome. Even though she's got, she was born with no eyelids and... We had to remove all her teeth because she's dumb. No, because she had a chronic condition and her teeth were falling out anyway. She's wow. uh, very spooky. Or, or hashtag spoopy, as the kids are saying, approximately a decade ago. No one says that anymore. Spoopy. But she's my little daughter. Yeah. I, 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 I forgot. This isn't, this isn't a video, so you guys can't see me petting her right now. Get on. Get on the Facebooks. Throw it in your Google machine. Yeah. G- Google the Gorgon. <laughs> the, Google the Gorgon. The movie and the cat. Woo. So, folks, I hope you have a good Halloween. I know the world is a bit hilarious right now, but uh, enjoy the Halloween season. Do what you got to do to frickin' get in the spirit of things. Heck yeah. Throw a mask on, go to frickin' Spirit <laughs> Halloween, stay away from people, which I love that part. It's the best. I know they talk about like, oh man, it's bad for human beings to be like away from each other. And I'm like, shit, y'all, this is the best. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I I love my listeners, but I hate everybody else. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Notice I said my listeners, not our. Well, I suck. That's yeah, all right. Hey, you know what? I'm possessed by the spirit of Lucinda and she's only looks out for one thing and that's Lucinda. That's right. But for real, for real, folks, thank you for listening. Brad, thank you mm. for joining, man. Thanks for having me. Merry Halloween to everyone. Yes. Here's this. Just, just do what we're doing. We're celebrating for two months. I think it's going to be a thing. We're just going to do, and I've seen a lot I of people do Two and a half this. now. Yeah, yeah, you guys started in August. August 14th is the start of spooky season around these parts. Dude, we're going to copy you next year. Yeah, I see a lot of folks on Twitter, like, just starting their shit on september 1st i'm like i am among good people <laughs> yes so oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and good night
Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.